Hey, what's going on guys? Today's video is a new updated overclock tutorial video to pretty much get the maximum performance out of your NVIDIA based graphics cards. We're going to be focusing on the 900 series cards by NVIDIA. So that pretty much includes all the graphics cards, including the 980 Ti, all the way down to the 960. And this is even relevant really to the 700 series based graphics cards by NVIDIA, pretty much any card using NVIDIA's GPU Boost 2.0. Today we're going to be using my GTX 970s by MSI to pretty much demonstrate the overclock clock tutorial so let's get started so there's many ways of actually overclocking your NVIDIA based graphics cards. Now most manufacturers today actually include a software in the box or you can actually download it off their website where it pretty much lets you install an app so you can select the card to silent mode, gaming mode and of course overclocking mode which probably most of you guys already know. But to get the most out of your performance out of your cards you need to actually manually overclock it. Now to do manually overclock you have to actually have a overclocking program and the three most programs today is actually Asus Tweak. EVGA Precision and of course your mighty MSI Afterburner. Now MSI Afterburner is my current favourite one. It also has a built in program called Revertuner which pretty much lets you have an on screen display while you're actually overclocking and also playing games to see what the graphics card is doing. Now I'm not actually sure if the other two um, overclocking programs have this installed. I'm not 100% sure but if they do guys let me know in the comments I'd love to know. But like I said, it doesn't matter which uh, overclocking program you use, they're pretty much all the same with a different layout. Now I must make a note there guys that if you're using an Asus card, apparently that Asus cards don't like MSI Afterburner and MSI cards don't actually like Asus Tweaks. So just bear that in mind if you're using such cards. Now of course guys, make sure you have NVIDIA's latest driver installed on your PC. The link for that will be in the description. And if you're actually using multiple graphics cards set up, then you don't have to necessarily remove them to actually overclock your cars. You can overclock with both cars installed uh, until they're pretty much stable like I did. But if you really want to be picky and actually find the maximum overclock out of both cars, then it's probably best to test separately. So you know, when you fit both of them, you sort of have a baseline or you know which is their maximum overclocks. Now, of course, you'll need a benchmark stress program to uh, stress the graphics card itself. The best actual stress test realistically is while well, wow, actually playing games. But for overclocking, you need obviously a stress program to do that. Now, there's many programs out there. There's lots of free ones and obviously ones to actually buy. I tend to use 3D Mark 11 and obviously 3D Mark to do this. There is free programs though, um, like Heaven Benchmark, which is a pretty much good one. I highly recommend it. And of course, MSI do their own version as well. But pretty much any program to stress the GPU while you while you're actually overclocking is what you need. So now the actual fun part itself, the actual overclocking procedure. So today I'm going to be using Heaven Benchmark 4.0, which is actually free on the basic edition. But again, if you wish to use your own benchmark program, go ahead and do so. I'm going to be using MSI Afterburner, which is my preferred favorite choice for overclocking graphics cards. But if you actually prefer to use any other such overclocking programs, such as Asus Tweak or of course EVGA Precision, go ahead and do so, because they're pretty much all the same, except for they have a different layout. And of course, I'm going to be using GPU Z just is simply because I can actually monitor the graphics cards and when I actually change the settings in MSI Afterburner I can actually see the settings being applied and that it's been done correctly. So of course all the 900 series and 700 series graphics cards by NVIDIA use GPU Boost 2.0 as you guys probably know which obviously of course heavily relies on power limit and of course temperatures of the card. And the first thing I like to do is adjust the power limit to its maximum. So if you use the MSI Afterburner, if you click on the little arrow here it will actually drop down the temperature limit. Now on the maximum of my card is 110%. This may vary on your cards though because obviously some cards run 105% and other cards run 115 or 110. But whatever yours is set it to your max now by setting it to the max what you're allowing is that extra like for myself is 10 percent that extra 10 percent more power so of course the graphics card can use that extra power if it desires it to obviously give the better performance of the card and give that higher tdp what stands for thermal design power if it requires it if not of course it won't use it now the temperature limit of course is linked as standard which is set at 91 so of course when the graphics card goes over 91 celsius obviously it will reduce the power limit but of course if you're not happy with that you can uncheck the link button of course lower it down to say 85 or or even AT or whatever you desire, it's more of a personal choice if you wish to. So this leaves the core voltage, core clocks, and of course the memory clocks. Now I recommend not adjusting the core voltage yet because obviously the 900 series is on the Maxwell architecture and I've seen many people achieve a core around about 1500 megahertz without any core adjustment. But again, this guy is dependent on the card and you may have to adjust it to get your desired overclock stable. But for now, I recommend not adjusting it. 
Now we're actually in the benchmark and then it's time to overclock the core and of course the memory clock. Now I recommend doing these separately so you can find what is the maximum overclock for the core and of course the maximum overclock for the memory. So as you can see on the on-screen display what's part of MSI Afterburner that my current core is actually at 1304 megahertz. Now the GPU stock boost is 12,000 sorry 1253 megahertz so GPU boost 2.0 is actually over boosting it by 50 megahertz and working as it should. So of course we're going to start with the core clock first and I recommend putting a nice number in around about 100 so we're going to do that now obviously click enter and apply and you can see now obviously it's boosting to 1392 megahertz on the core and it's as simple as that you can actually slide it if you wish and then from this point I recommend do it in 20 intervals so you put in 120 and of course apply I must note I'm having no core voltage like I said earlier and of course it's at 1418 so again you just keep doing this until of course your gpu comes unstable and actually crashes so again you click apply and then at 1443 and that is how simple it is to overclock your graphics card now you must note though that my actual uh, gpu boost clock is at 1393 but obviously actually it's at 1443 because obviously gpu boost again is over boosting it depending on the temperatures and of course that headroom in the tdp now i already know what is my maximum overclock is so if i put a nice number of 200 plus megahertz on the core and of course click apply now my obviously uh, gpu's core is running at 1504 megahertz and i must take note though guys that is with no core voltage increase the maxwell architecture is pretty much uh, energy efficient in terms of um, performance wise and of course you probably will not require it. Some cards may require it though, but of course a lot of cards will not. Now my maximum core overclock is actually 220 and I do use a plus 30 millivolts on the core just to make sure it is stable. But I can't show you though guys because most likely it will crash and ruin this video. So once of course your video uh, card has crashed, once you find your maximum overclock, then obviously go back into it and set it maybe 20 megahertz actually lower than it crashed and then slowly increasing it by one until of course it crashes again and then, and then go back into it again and of course set it back by about two and that is your maximum overclock so of course then you want to do pretty much the same procedure on the memory clock now this is slightly different because every 100 megahertz you put on the memory clock obviously of course is 200 on the memory now if you look obviously on the on screen display again the memory overclock, uh, memory uh, clock speed is 3,506 megahertz, but you must times this by two, or equals 7,012. Now, if I add a 100 megahertz overclock to it and click apply, now it's at 3,600, but if you times that by two, that is 7,200. So as you can see, every 100 megahertz you put, you have to times by two. Now again, I was, of course, going in 20 intervals until it comes unstable. Normally, you actually get uh, yellow flashes and green flickers on the screen where it starts becoming unstable and at that point obviously you reduce it until it goes away and that is your maximum overclock or of course it crashes and you reduce now obviously I know what is my maximum overclock what is 500 but I'm just going to put 400 in to show you click apply and now it's at 3903 megahertz times up by 2 is 7800 now I can get 500 and get around about 8000 megahertz but most likely it will crash for this video and I use it for benchmarking now of course once you find your two maximum overclocks then you combine them together and of course if I put 200 on the uh, on the core clock and click apply you can now see that the cores run at 1504 megahertz the memory is running at 3900 times 2 of course is 7800 what is a pretty much a nice very nice overclock if you're designed to do so now overclocking your core of course is a like a cpu a processor so of course faster the processor loads and reads of course faster it performs now memory clock is of course how fast your memory actually reads and of course so faster your memory is of course faster it can load textures rendering and of course shades and stuff in game what should overall give you better fps now before we go of course the fan speed now this is i believe a personal choice but way i do it if you go into the settings and take a look i tend to run a fan curve and pretty much whatever the temperature of the card is the fan speed runs the same so for example 60 celsius obviously the fan speed will be 60 celsius 40 celsius 40 celsius 
40% fan speed. And that is how I do it. But again, you might want the silent build and not have the fans kicking in at all to 60 stars. Or you might have them running in a higher demand because you want all out performance. But again, this is like I said, a personal thing. So just pretty much do whatever you want. And that is pretty much it. So there we go guys, that was my new updated overclock tutorial video for you and I really enjoyed making this one and I hope you guys actually enjoyed this video as well. If this video has helped one person then my job's gone and it'll make me really happy. So please give me a thumbs up, I really appreciate it, it really does help me. And of course if you didn't like the video you can always give me a thumbs down, but that would be mean so don't do that. But as always guys, I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.